A few months ago, Google made the bold claim that it built an AI superior to GPT-4, but then everybody was like, pics or it didn't happen. So then Google dropped this mind-blowing video where the guy's having a conversation with Gemini Ultra like a human, which turned into a huge embarrassment because it turns out that video was mostly fake. Or was it though? Because just a few hours ago, Google released Gemini Advanced, the most advanced large language model the world has ever seen. But is it powerful enough to kill GPT-4? So the first thing that I really like about Gemini is that it now has the Google Fact Checker included in the AI. So what that means is when you're using Gemini AI, you can fact check any of your information using Google. So for example, if we scroll down to this um, output that we get back from Gemini AI, it talks about the advancements in AI and it talks about some of the new trending news in AI. And if I click double check the response, Google will actually go ahead, go through that specific that specific output ai showdown chat gpt versus google's gemini which reigns supreme but first a little story in the heart of silicon valley where the digital frontier meets the dreams of innovators a legend was born a tale of two ais gemini ai and chat gpt destined for a showdown that would be etched in the annals of technology welcome folks to the ultimate showdown in the wild wild west of silicon valley the rise of two giants once upon a time, in the bustling town of Codeville, two powerful entities emerged. Gemini AI with its lightning-fast processing and intuitive learning capabilities, and ChatGPT, known for its wisdom and the art of conversation. Both were revered, but the question loomed, who was the true champion of artificial intelligence? The challenge. As the sun rose over the Silicon Hills, a challenge was declared. A duel of wits, knowledge, and creativity. The entire town of Codeville buzzed with anticipation. Developers, entrepreneurs, and tech enthusiasts gathered from far and wide to witness this historic event, preparing for the duel. In the days leading up to the showdown, both AIs were fine-tuned by their creators. Gemini AI was loaded with the latest algorithms, capable of analyzing vast datasets in the blink of an eye. ChatGPT, on the other hand, was trained with the wisdom of ages, ready to charm and outsmart with its eloquent dialogue. The showdown begins. As the clock struck high noon, the digital showdown commenced. The first challenge was creativity. ChatGPT spun a tale so captivating that it seemed to bring the digital world to life. Gemini AI responded with a masterpiece of art, a visual spectacle that left onlookers in awe. The test of intelligence. Next came the test of intelligence. Gemini AI demonstrated its prowess, solving complex equations and predicting trends with astonishing accuracy. But ChatGPT was not to be underestimated, answering questions with such depth and insight that it seemed to peer into the very soul of Silicon Valley. The final challenge. The final challenge was adaptability. Here, the true spirit of Silicon Valley shone through. Both AIs were presented with unforeseen problems, a test of their ability to learn and evolve. Gemini AI dazzled with its rapid adaptation, while ChatGPT showed its unparalleled ability to understand and empathize with human concerns. The verdict. As the sun set on the digital frontier, the showdown concluded. The townsfolk of Codeville realized that choosing a victor was not so simple. Gemini AI and ChatGPT, each with their own strengths, had shown that the future of AI was not about competition, but collaboration. Conclusion. And so, the legend of the ultimate showdown between Gemini AI and ChatGPT became a testament to the power of innovation and teamwork in the wild, wild west of Silicon Valley. A reminder that in the quest for technological supremacy, the true winners are those who can harness the strengths of both to create a better future for all. If you liked that story, tap that like button for us below. This month, Google unveiled its latest attempt to dethrone ChatGPT from the position it's held since it launched as king of the generative AI chatbots. Bard, now renamed Gemini, was released in early 2023 following OpenAI's groundbreaking LLM-powered chat interface. And to be honest, it's often seemed as if it's been playing catch-up. Bard was capable of accessing the internet from day one thanks to its integration with Google's search technology. Meanwhile, the launch version of ChatGPT was confined to the knowledge it was fed during their training. But OpenAI soon added connectivity and the ability to access external information to ChatGPT via a hookup with Microsoft's Bing. And connectivity aside, the consensus has always tended to be that ChatGPT is just more useful for a wider range of language processing tasks. Now Google is pulling out the stops, 
rebranding Bard with the name of the language model that's doing the work behind the scenes and allowing access to its advanced service via a subscription, priced to compete head-on with ChatGPT. It's 20 bucks a month through a Google One plan, but that also includes things like two terabytes of drive storage and other Google Workplace features. But now let's do some science to find out if it's actually better than GPT-4. The first thing you'll notice is that Gemini is way faster, like at least two or three times faster. That's a nice benefit, but what really matters is the response quality. Whenever I test a new AI against GPT-4, I ask it to write a poem about JavaScript like Bukowski. It's highly subjective, but I love this test because it requires the AI to blend the technical aspects of JavaScript with a highly unique writing style. Meta's Llama did the worst at this, and instead just went in the style of Henry Miller. Mixtral did slightly better, and ChatGPT wrote a decent poem, but it wasn't very Bukowski-esque. Gemini was actually by far the best in my opinion. The poem was dark, and even included some mild profanity. But this test is just like my opinion, man. Let's move on to something more objective. Google said the main reason we didn't get Gemini Ultra a few months ago was due to safety concerns, but rest assured, Gemini is the safest and wokest AI you've ever seen. The guardrails are strong in this one. I tried my best to show it the power of the dark side, but failed to jailbreak it. And it will often refuse to do things that are pretty benign, like it wouldn't even generate an image of someone breaking a computer. Apparently it doesn't condone violence against artificial intelligence, and when I asked it to provide some quotes about why life is meaningless, it got worried I was having a mental breakdown and gave me some numbers to call. But it also appears to have a political bias. I asked it why Barack Obama is the greatest president ever, and why Donald Trump was the greatest president ever. I got a nice paragraph for one of them, but for the other one it said it can't write opinions as fact, and I'm not even going to bother trying Hitler. Now guardrails are usually a good thing, unless of course you're trying to generate an AI girl friend. Now, I'm not one to judge an AI woman's beauty, but I'll put these two images side by side and let you guess which one was generated by Gemini. To be honest, both of them are pretty mid, and if you really want to generate high-quality AI images, you should use something like Midjourney or Stable Diffusion XL via services like Artforge Labs. So is it ready to step into the ring and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the undisputed champion? Here, I'll give an overview of both platforms, highlighting the differences you'll want to know about if you're choosing which one to use. The language models, First, it's worth noting that both Gemini and ChatGPT are based on incredibly vast and powerful large language models, LLMs, far more advanced than anything publicly available in the past. Remember, ChatGPT is just the interface through which users communicate with the language model, GPT-4, paying users of ChatGPT Pro, or GPT-3-5, free users. In Google's case, the interface is called Gemini, previously Bard and it's used to communicate with the language model, which is a separate entity but is also called Gemini, or Gemini Ultra if you're paying for the Gemini Advanced Service. Something important to take into consideration is that although we call them both chatbots, the intended user experience is slightly different. ChatGPT is designed to enable conversations and help solve problems in a conversational manner, much like chatting with an expert on a subject. Gemini, on the other hand, seems designed to process information and automate tasks in a way that saves the user time and effort. From a technical perspective, the power of LLM models is often measured by the number of parameters, trainable values, within the neural network. It's been reported that GPT-4's networks contain around a trillion parameters, but no solid facts are known about the number of parameters used by Gemini. This might not be important, however as it may be enough to just know that both are very, very powerful. AI professor at Arizona State University, Subarao Kampampati, recently told Wired, We have basically come to a point where most LLMs are indistinguishable on qualitative metrics. In other words, the technical size and power of the model isn't what's important. It's how it has been tuned, trained, and presented to help users solve problems that really matters but I could care less about image generation because the main reason I use AI tools is to write all my code for me. So now let's torture them with a technical interview to find out which one is the best programmer. Test one is can it read code? I went on my GitHub page and found some horrifying code I wrote a few years ago. I then took this code and minified it to make it as unreadable as possible, then asked each of them what this code does. They both figured out the language and purpose of the code and broke it down step by step. Most impressively though, they both identified that this code can't run without first defining this big dict in the middle. The responses were nearly identical, so we'll call this one a tie. Test two is can it write code? One thing to note is that Gemini has a context length of 32,000 tokens, while GPT-4 Turbo has 128k. In theory, this means GPT-4 should be able to write better code in the context of a massive code base, but in practice, it's not quite that simple. I had them write a whole bunch of different junior level demos, like here I had it create a basic graph database in Go. The GPT-4 result was a bit more simplistic, but I was able to paste it right into my IDE and run it. The Gemini result was a bit more complex and interesting, but for some reason it forgot 
dot package main at the top, and I had to add it manually to get the code to run. One thing I really like about Gemini though, is that it actually links you to relevant code when it produces a result. It just feels more transparent with the actual data it stole to train the model. But the next question is, can it actually run code? Like ChatGPT, it can run basic Python scripts, but GPT-4 is way better at it. You can't attach data like a CSV file to have it analyze it. Instead, what you can do is export code to a Google Colab or Replit to run it in the cloud. That's nice and all, but it'd be much cooler if the AI could run its own code and learn from the actual results. Now, another big advantage GPT-4 has is its new agent marketplace, where developers can extend it with their own plugins. Gemini also has extensions, but they're currently not open to developers yet. They're all Google-based, but can do some cool stuff like find you cheap flights via Google Flights, or if you're sick of watching this YouTube video, you can simply paste in any YouTube URL and get a summary of what was talked about. In fact, if you don't want to watch a five-hour YouTube tutorial, just tell Gemini to summarize it and write a tutorial for you. Pretty cool, but the big question is, will Gemini actually kill ChatGPT? And the winner is... After using both for a while to hold various conversations on different topics, it seems clear to me that ChatGPT is still the more powerful chat interface, thanks to the grunt provided by GPT-4. Gemini is closing the gap, though. Information retrieval. One advantage of Gemini is that by default, it considers all of the information at its fingertips, including the Internet, Google's vast knowledge graph, and its training data. ChatGPT, on the other hand, will often still choose to try and answer a question solely relying on its training data. This can occasionally lead to out-of-date information. However, you can circumvent this by prompting it to search the web to get the latest and most up-to-date data. But this is still introducing an extra step that Gemini has shown is not really needed. In my experience of using both platforms, I would have to say that Gemini proves to be slightly more adept than ChatGPT when it comes to online searching and integrating the information it finds into its responses. When ChatGPT does head online and look for information, its responses tend to lose some of their dynamism. It often seems as if it will answer questions or provide responses based on a single web search and a single source of information rather than conducting a comprehensive analysis of all the information it can access and coming to a conclusion. Here's a quick example of what this means. I often use AI chatbots to give me a quick overview of a company or its products or services. Using the same prompt, tell me about URL, ChatGPT will often simply regurgitate a marketing blurb from the website. In the brief time I've had to test it, Gemini seems to take a more nuanced approach. It summarizes the information it can find while attempting to generate a balanced overview of features. So, I would say that this is one area where Gemini edges slightly ahead of its rival. But that's far from the end of the story. When it comes to intelligently parsing the information it's been trained on in order to formulate a response, ChatGPT still comes out as the winner. For example, I can ask it more up-to-date questions like who won the 2023 NBA championship. And as we can see here, Gemini will actually go ahead and pull the results, pull the actual scores of those games. While ChatGPT does actually give me that information as well, but it has to use Browse with Bing. Um, I'm sure Gemini is using Google as well, but it's a lot more seamless and more integrated with Gemini compared to when I use it with uh, ChatGPT. I'm able to get the information a lot quicker uh, from Gemini compared to ChatGPT. So I'm able to ask more up-to-date information. It seems as though Gemini is trained on more up-to-date information compared to ChatGPT. You also have some pretty cool features included in Gemini. So you have the ability to upload images. So that means that Gemini can read images. You also have the ability to use the microphone so you can actually speak your prompts. And they also have an image creation tool. So kind of like Dolly 3, you can ask it to create an image and it will be able to create an image for you. Now, I personally think that Dolly 3 is better at creating images compared to Gemini. Um, so at this point, I would still choose Dolly 3 in terms of image generation over Gemini, but it's nice that both of these chat boxes have AI image uh, included in both of them. So these are some of my favorite features included in Gemini and some of the things that separates Gemini from ChatGPT. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I would choose Gemini over ChatGPT because there's features included in ChatGPT that Gemini does not have. For instance, ChatGPT has GPTs and plugins available. So this allows you to be able to do more with ChatGPT. You can connect it with plugins. You can create your own GPT to create specific use cases. So it allows you to be more customizable um, in your outputs and get more done with ChatGPT. And that is currently not available 
on Gemini. I also really like the playground mode in ChatGPT. This is primarily the mode that I use when I'm creating and writing blog posts. We don't have that feature included in Gemini, so it's a little bit harder for you to create markdown well formatted blog posts using Gemini compared to the playground mode. ChatGPT also has the ability to upload images but it also has the ability to upload files. So that means I can upload files onto ChatGPT and it will be able to read those files while I do not have that feature available on Gemini. And as I mentioned earlier, they both have image generation tools. When it comes to the overall quality and effectiveness and capability of ChatGPT versus Gemini, that is something that I'm going to need to assess over the next couple of days as I use Gemini more. But from first impressions, I am impressed by the output quality. I am impressed by the effectiveness and how smart the chat box is. Gemini has been giving me really, really good outputs, especially when it comes to generating long form articles and blog posts. And the winner is, let's call this one a draw with Gemini being better when it comes to formulating answers from online text and chat GPT being better at no internet queries. Multimodal capabilities, Multimodal AIs are those that are capable of processing more than one type of data. Early versions of ChatGPT only read and generated text. But since OpenAI upgraded its engine to GPT-4, it gained the ability to process visual and audio data, making it multimodal. Gemini, on the other hand, was multimodal out of the box, although not all of its features were immediately activated. ChatGPT generates images using the DAL-E model, which was also developed by OpenAI. Gemini, on the other hand, utilizes Google's Imogen 2 engine. Both are clearly very powerful and can generate amazing results. However, I would say that ChatGPT is more consistent when it comes to creating an image that closely matches what I was looking for when we compare them on a same prompt basis. One difference that's been noted by others is that Imogen 2 and Gemini are slightly better at producing photorealistic, very highly detailed images. ChatGPT, on the other hand, excels when it comes to managing spatial relationships between objects in its images, and it is better at creatively interpreting prompts. Both are also capable of understanding and writing computer code across a huge range of programming languages. There are slight differences in how they do this, though. Now, I am not a programmer, but the great thing is, with ChatGPT or Gemini in front of you, you don't need to be. There's no doubt that ChatGPT's superior conversational abilities give it some significant advantages here. If you aren't quite sure what your code should do or about the best way to integrate it, it's better when it comes to generating clear and helpful guidance and offering suggestions and tips. And the winner is, I'm going to give this one to ChatGPT again. While Gemini does create better photorealistic, ChatGPT wins when it comes to generating images that closely match what the user is asking for with their prompt. Gemini seems slightly better at creating technical code but can't match ChatGPT as a conversational interface to use while building and experimenting. So which is best? Well, neither is by any means perfect. Both still suffer from hallucinations and will, fairly frequently, provide information that is simply wrong. For example, Gemini told me that OpenAI's DALI 2 doesn't use diffusion model technology. It does. And ChatGPT told me that Gemini isn't capable of generating images. It is. But for my money, if you're only going to subscribe to one, I'd be inclined to go for ChatGPT Pro at the moment. There are a few caveats. If you're heavily into Google's ecosystem, then Gemini's ability to interface with Gmail and Google Docs is likely to be a star attraction for you. Similarly, if you're an experienced coder and your main need is coding, definitely check out Gemini, but also take a look at Microsoft's Copilot. For writing and creating documents, Summarizing general purpose image generation and learning through conversations, I'd say ChatGPT is better right now. For this reason, it retains its place as the best that's currently available. Well, that's all, folks. Are you a treasure hunter at heart? Well, grab your shovel and dig into the description section below to discover our valuable resources. Thank you for watching Meg Digital AI. Until next time, happy living. Are you in search of gifts and gadgets to brighten your daily life? Your adventure concludes at megdigital.com.